if I want to change the momentum of an object, then I need to either affect its mass or its velocity. And obviously, objects don't spontaneously lose mass on a general basis. So I'm going to be looking at how changing the velocity of an object impacts its momentum. Now in this video here, the football is being passed into the box and headed into the goal. If we look at it again, you will see that initially the football is acting in this path there and once it's been headed it's changed velocity changing direction changes velocity and since momentum is mass times velocity then changing the velocity changes the momentum so a force is what's needed to change the momentum of an object or another way of thinking about it if an object experiences a change in momentum, it experiences a force. So for example, if we look at a basketball bouncing on the ground, you can see that manifestation of the force as the basketball squashes down. It has a downward momentum of mv. As it rebounds, it has an upward momentum of minus mv because it's acting in the other direction. That means that the change in momentum is minus mv minus mv, the initial momentum, so it experiences an overall change in momentum of minus 2mv, and that produces a force, which squashes the ball. We call that change in momentum an impulse. Here we've got two eggs being thrown at two different walls. One is a solid wall, and on the right we have a sheet. Now, both the eggs have got the same initial velocity, the same final velocity, and the same mass. So that means that the change in momentum of the egg hitting the wall is the same as the change in momentum of the egg hitting the sheet. But for some reason, the one hitting the sheet doesn't break. They have to have the same change in momentum, and the only thing that's different between them is the time over which you get that change. And that's the key factor here. Because when you have a change in momentum, or an impulse, the force experienced during that change in momentum equals the change in momentum or the impulse over the time it took. By increasing the time, so by having the egg hit the sheet, the force it experienced was far lower and as a result it didn't smash. So the definition of impulse is it is the change in momentum. So it's either delta mv or as we can see here if we bring time up to the top, impulse is also equal to force times time. And the unit, other than kilogram meters per second, is newton second. So impulse can also be force times time with units newton second. Let's have a look at a couple of examples then. Iron Man is in his 1,300 kilogram suit, moving at 25 meters per second, crashes into a wall, so his VF is going to be uh, zero, which is what I've written down here, and it took 0.14 seconds to stop. So writing down those key aspects, I need to find the change in momentum, so I need to do mass times final velocity, which was zero, minus mass times initial velocity gives us a change in momentum of 32,500 kilogram meters per second. Part B says determine the impulse. Well, the impulse is just change in momentum, which is change in mv, or force times time. We worked out a change in momentum in part A, so our impulse is just mv, which is our change in momentum from before. Now to determine the magnitude of the force that he experiences, or well force, is just change in momentum over time. Take my 32,500, divide it by the 0.14, and I get a force of 23,000, sorry, 232,142.2 newtons. Pretty big force. Find an example, a real life application here, 
Researchers at NASA's Langley Center have been experimenting with using airbags to try and cushion the landing of uh, crew vehicles. Now, we're asked what stopping time is needed to stop a 7,250 kilogram vehicle moving with this speed here with an average force of 6,000 newtons or about 6 g's. That's about the upper limit of what a human can survive. Well, if we're going to find a force, we know that force is change in momentum over time, so we're going to need to find a change in momentum first. Substituting our figures into our change in momentum equation, we get a change in momentum of 55,462.5 kilogram meters per second. Now we can put that momentum there into our force equation, putting our time rearrange it to get time and if we put our numbers in we end up getting a time needed to safely land of 9.24 seconds so a change in momentum is an impulse and the force experienced during an impulse is equal to that change in momentum or impulse over time